Hi, I'm Robin Gansard, and this is Robin's Nest, a space for voices that really matter. My guest today is Dr. Kathleen Dzinski, a world-renowned marine mammal scientist who has dedicated her career to understanding dolphins and their incredible ways of communicating. Many of us feel a deep bond with animals, from the pets we cherish at home to the endangered species in nature. Join us for lively, informative conversations where together we will build a more humane world. Oh gosh, today's episode of Robin's Nest is gonna be great for those water lovers. Have you ever been well watching? Do you love to swim with dolphins? I tell you, I do. <laughs> I love it all. And I love those great creatures of the sea. And today we have in Robin's Nest, Dr. Kathleen Dzinski. She's been in the nest before. We've learned so many incredible facts and we've experienced her passion for research. We've been teased with her research that she has that's come out. And uh, I tell you, there's no other person who's done as much for dolphins and for the research uh, with populations in nature and populations in zoos and aquariums than this incredible woman here. So I'm so glad to welcome Dr. Dozinski back to Robin's Nest. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, Robin. Oh, it's great to be here. Great to have you. And I have to ask you, you have done some incredible research lately. Mm -hmm. It's new uh, and it's so impressive because I think it changes the narrative. And you've been all about changing the narrative since you started your career. Yes. But let's talk about orcas. Those yes. killer whales. First of all, are they whales? No, they're dolphins. See? That's they're exactly dolphins. right. Everyone so, talks about killer yeah. whales thinking that they're a whale. They're dolphins. Well, killer whales, their common name. So, you know, yes. they have that because they're big. Yes. You know, most of the dolphins, there's three or four species of dolphins that have whale in their name mm -hmm. because they're much bigger than the smaller dolphins. Yes. So, which is which is pretty cool. Yes. But now over, I mean, we chatted before and I've been able to look at killer whales for the last three to five years. Mm -hmm. We're studying them exactly the same way that we study the small dolphins, mm -hmm. the bottlenose and spotted dolphins, mm -hmm. using uh, video analysis, observing their behaviors. And the exciting thing is we are seeing no difference in their surface activities, whether they're socializing, they're resting, moving around, different mm -hmm. things like that, right. between the killer whales in managed care and the killer whales in the wild, based on literature that we've collected. So wait a minute, because this is a shock in all moment, because <laughs> this is not what we read about in the media, Correct. Uh, but this is real scientific evidence. And you are saying that your yes. research shows mm -hmm. that there's really no difference Correct. In their social activities for a killer whale in human care correct, and one in the wild. What we've seen, correct, when we're looking at their um, activity levels, so whether they're resting or they're playing mm -hmm. or they're socializing, mm -hmm. we've seen, we've compared that information to right. the literature. And there's a few few papers out there that talk about the different percentages. So right. getting a little technical in the science, the mm -hmm. percentage of, of act activity that is ongoing. This has never so been seen, done before, right? Well, no, it hasn't been done before. Yeah, but she's we're a trailblazer and innovator, guys. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But actually, I have mm -hmm. more than from the last time we chatted because mm -hmm. we weren't just looking at the surface activity. We are now looking underwater. So we have footage from these animals in managed care underwater and from the wild. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen by comparing the, the data, looking at the data the same way that we do with small dolphins mm -hmm. is how they act animal to animal, so yes. killer whale to killer whale, yes. is the same as how bottlenose dolphins and spotted dolphins act to each other. So it's large and small dolphins. They use their bodies, act in, actions, behaviors the same way. So it's like large and small dogs. They're still dogs. Pretty much, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they still have the same behaviors that's yep. related to... And we just recently, this last month or two, we've mm -hmm. gotten in footage from two groups of animals in the mm -hmm. wild, mm -hmm. two groups of, I should say, killer whale groups in the yes. wild, yes. underwater footage and drone footage. And so we're comparing that to what we've seen for the animals in managed care. Oh. And as with the smaller dolphins, we're not really seeing any differences. Again, I think this is contrary to the narrative out there. Mm -hmm. I think this is, is so exciting. It is. Real science coming to mm -hmm. solve what has been an ethical debate that has no root in anything other than emotion. Correct. That is important. You're doing such yes. incredible work. Um, I want to back. Exciting. It is exciting. I want to back up for a minute because people will say, "Well, I'm in Robin's Nest and I'm hearing this, and it sounds completely different than what my news story mm -hmm. is saying. Um, why should I believe it?" Dr. Dzinski, go back and share your background and 
how long you've been in the space and and who you are because it's so impressive. Well, well, thank you, Robin. Mm -hmm. And I, I, believe it or not, I've been doing this for three decades. I've been studying dolphin communication and behavior from the underwater perspective. Mm -hmm. When I started graduate school in the early 90s, mm -hmm. there was no program to study dolphin communication. Mm -hmm. And there were no tools to study dolphin communication. Mm -hmm. So in conversation with my dad, who was an electrical engineer, and mm -hmm. my uh, graduate advisor, mm -hmm. we developed and designed and built a mobile video acoustic system mm -hmm. that gave us the tools to study dolphin communication to look at their vocalizations, their behaviors, inter-animal exchanges. Right. So we now had a tool. Yes. And so then what I did is use that tool to collect three decades worth of data on animals in the wild and in managed care. Wow. And then to study those data. So we actually spent a little more time watching the videos, mm -hmm. but that gives us these subtle patterns of behavior, these nuances and how animals share information. The, the looks that they can give each other the postures where um, a calf will be next to its mom yes. in echelon or in infant position. But those two postures are used by adults and by mixed sex groups and pairs because it's probably for courtship or maybe an, an interaction. We right. know that females alloparent, they babysit other females' calves oh. before they've had their calves to learn how to be a mom. Oh, I love that. Males mentor younger males. We didn't know that until recently based on postures and pair swims. There's about seven or eight places around each dolphin's body called pair swims where mm -hmm. they'll be. Young males and young females use pectoral fin contact differently, but then when they get older, they use them for the same reasons. So as I'm hearing all of this, first of all, I love the fact that your entire life really, as, as an adult, devoted yeah. to understanding this one particular species mm -hmm and how they communicate. It's advancing science in such a broad, broad way. It's so mightily impressive. And I love that your dad got in on the game early on too and helped yep. you build this technology, which is stunning. Let's fast forward today to the threats that face killer whales. So much of it's due to misinformation, mm -hmm. right? That has mm -hmm. to make a scientific expert such as yourself just a little bothered, maybe yeah. even angry <laughs> over the misinformation because we have killer whales in crisis now because yes. people are using a political agenda against an animal and their lives are at risk. Right. So um, share with us a little bit about your thoughts about that because this is real present day knowledge that you've created that can solve these incredible ethical and, and political challenges. Well, to, to promote my message, when I started, just a quick couple sentence of, yes. of history, when, when I graduated, mm -hmm. at that time, academia, universities, did not want outreach. They didn't want somebody to come into the, mm -hmm. their academic halls right. who also did outreach with the general public through maybe zoos and aquariums. Mm -hmm. That's changed now. Right. You know, 30 years later, everybody wants that. Right. But because of that, I chose not to go the academic route. Right. I, I founded and direct my own nonprofit, which allowed me to have an umbrella to do my research. Yes. But also to do the public education, the outreach. Yes. So we do this in three different ways. We mm -hmm. take people into the field with us. They Beautiful. come on eco-tours. We mm -hmm. work with eight universities to bring students on field courses. So they get hands-on experience. Right. Hands-on. They learn how we collect the data, how we analyze the data. Mm -hmm. They get to meet the animals, which... An interpersonal connection is something that is really important to form. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the best way. So having people come out and meet the animals. Mm -hmm. My husband would not agree with me when I say that media and is the second best. But that's the image, to share that information, to bring that out to people, yes. to say, look, this is what we're learning, to show cinematically what we have with the animals and to get people interested in what's going on. And that we do through the Dolphin Communication website, through our webinars. We have deep dives. We have dolphin lessons. They're all free. We have podcasts. We share this information. We have Wonderful. video programs on our website. And then also through the written word, through, through I have a children's book. I have a, a, an adult book and through chapters, getting the information because everybody learns differently. Yes. So you have an in-person, you have the other zoos and aquariums allow us to give that personal connection so people can meet these animals up close and learn about them and fall in love with them exactly and then choose to protect them which exactly we always say you know there are situations due to misinformation and due to not enough people understanding Correct. and particularly not aware of your research where killer whales in particular are facing a death sentence 
this very day. And this is in France due to a political movement that's so out of line with rational thinking and not just rational thinking, it's thinking with the heart. Mm -hmm. What do you think about these killer whales being left stranded in this political or caught in the middle of a political quagmire in France? Well, I, I believe that the people that have put these animals in this position don't have the best interests of the animals at heart because if they did, the animals would have been moved. Yeah, I think that's very important. The animals would and should be moved yes. today. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually have studied those animals. I've studied the, we, we did some cognitive work on creativity and a reading mm -hmm. study with the animals. I've, mm -hmm. I've observed them. Mm -hmm. uh, I know them. And I, I and you would, love them. I love them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would have hoped, mm -hmm. I think, that Laurel Park is the perfect place for them to be, mm -hmm. to be in that social group. That would be a, a great, I mean, I, I can see it. I'm hoping for it to be there for them. Because we're seeing these animals. I'm studying the Laurel mm -hmm. Park animals. And I see interactions and behaviors that match what I've seen for the small dolphins, that match yes. what we're seeing for the animals in the wild. Yes. And so it's it's they're well cared for. They have the best welfare. Animals to people to take care of them, to to look at them. Animals in managed care get health care. These incredible wells that are caught in a political crisis rooted in misinformation. And we know there's an easy solution and path forward. But a lot of people in Robin's Nest listening today may not know about these whales, these precious, beautiful killer whales that I know you love and mm -hmm. you know personally why they are in crisis. What's going on? Can you share with everyone in the nest today what is going on with these whales in France? I will share what I know from my perspective outside of yes. France. Mm -hmm. uh, Wiki and Keho, an adult female and her son. Wiki and Keiko. I love the names. Wiki and Keiko. Yep. Mm -hmm. They. They. Uh, I've studied them. We did creativity studies with them. Mm -hmm. Reading study. It was. Oh. They both learn differently, but it's very cool to mm -hmm. watch them and to mm -hmm. see how they they interact. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever happened with the park, the park is closed. I don't know all of the politics mm -hmm. that went in with that. And originally, the animals were set to move um, to one location, and that mm -hmm. didn't come through because uh, detractors. I, I try not to use the term activist because yes. I look at activism as a positive thing. And I'm an activist, and so are you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so people who are against zoos and aquariums, detractors, mm -hmm. uh, lobbied the governments of France and Spain and said, no, 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 they shouldn't go there. They should go to a sanctuary, which doesn't exist. There's, there is no there's sanctuary. There's no sanctuary. It, yeah. And it's not even scientifically possible to build one in enough time for these animals to be able to Correct. live. Correct. So for me, in, in everything that I've learned and watched this, I was very excited when I learned that they could be going to Loro Parque. Because I thought, this is perfect. The animals there are in good care. Mm -hmm. They are hum American Humane, Global Humane certified. They are Global Humane I, certified. I've observed them. We're studying the mm -hmm. animals there. Mm -hmm. This is their home. This should have been their forever home. And I still hope that they can go there. I think that that would be the perfect place for them. They can have a social group with the animals that are there. But the bottom line is the government stopped yes. uh, their uh, ability to move these animals. Mm -hmm. They stopped that move from happening. I, and so now the whales' lives are in limbo. Mm -hmm. The park is shut down. It's deteriorating. These whales need yes. to move or they will mm -hmm. die. Basically, the French government has sentenced them to a death sentence if they don't move them soon. We're talking soon so they get the care that they need and they so deserve. And we both know, because we've been there, Lower Parque is the best place for these wells to have a forever loving home. Mm -hmm. And we all want a forever loving home for all animals. That's why we listen to Robin's Nest and we're passionate animal advocates. We want these animals rescued and we have to let our voices be heard mm -hmm. to the French government. And I know we're going to work on that together, you and I. Yes. This week, we're gonna be writing and, and reaching out to uh, everyone who will listen to us in the French government and yes. say that these animals are on death row and we have to give them a second chance at life. We have to get those whales moved, these incredible killer whales moved to Laura Parque. And remember, killer whales are dolphins. dolphins. And we're talking to the world's top dolphin expert right here, Dr. Kathleen Dzinski. Kathleen, you. please continue to share your story. I get so passionate about this. I'm so sorry. No, I'm right there with you. I don't yeah. think politics should be allowed to impact animal welfare. That's the, the killer line for tonight. Politics should mm -hmm. not impact Correct. animal welfare because politicians do not have the scientific Correct. base of expertise to say what's best for an animal. Correct. I agree. Couldn't agree more. That's wonderful. And and with 
all that we're doing, we're learning about these animals. Yes. The important thing is to share it, to get what we know about these animals yes. out in, in as many conservation initiatives as possible. Because what we learn about the animals in our care mm -hmm. can then be applied to animals who are in distress in the wild. Yes, absolutely. So I know you've got a an um, a huge agenda of work mm -hmm. ahead, and yes. you have a an area that needs mm -hmm. proper scientifically based information and humane solutions, which you're offering. Yes. Now you're a finalist for the international I prize know. for species conservation, and certainly you're working to conserve species in a huge way. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to be a Kiesling Prize finalist this year? I'm honored. Mm -hmm. To be a finalist, to be recognized for my decades of work, mm -hmm. it's it's an added encouragement that we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. The recognition will expand our reach. Mm -hmm. um, through the Dolphin Communication Project, I like to say that um, our reach is small but mighty. Yes. And so by collaborating with Global Humane and collaborating with the Kiesling family and the Kiesling Prize, it means we can reach that many more people and share this message and get everybody on board. Absolutely. And you're sharing the message that science offers mm -hmm. meaningful and impactful solutions. Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. We learn from the animals in our care. We can watch moms and calves 24-7 before, during, and after mm -hmm. the birth. We understand the assessment of the animals. We can look at them and say, what do they need to thrive, to survive and thrive? Mm -hmm. That's information that can be taken from managed care and applied to the critically endangered killer whales. We can to look at what's going on with them. What do we need to help them survive? And that's only possible because of managed care. And certainly because of your work studying populations in the wild yes. and in managed human care. Dr. Dasinski, always a pleasure to have you here in Robustness. Thank you for your leadership Thank you. and your passion. And let's make sure that we find a forever loving home for these incredible wells yes. in crisis in France. Thank yes. you for all you do. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Robin's Nest. Please like, subscribe, and follow. And thanks for all you do to build a more humane world.